What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On August 21st. 2018. Upon checking the Wikipedia page for Rutgersville, Virginia, Christine went to Twitter to point out that she was listed as one of the town's most notable residents, designated as an internet personality. She also linked to a screenshot of a certain website which ranked people by popularity, which named Chris as the 29,869th most popular person in the world. And so asked for the whereabouts of her own Wikipedia article. Later that day, at 3:36 p.m. local time, Chris announced it was sleepy time with the accompaniment of the sleepy time silly random word, dundernuts. On the 22nd, she added a new item on eBay for $200, a plush doll of the Pokemon Snorlax, signed by her mother Barbara Chandler. Alluding to the nickname past trolls had assigned to her after a leaked photo surfaced of Barbara sleeping during a time she was significantly overweight. On August 23rd, Chris enlightened a Twitter user who had asked her whether Quickville was the name of its own dimension. She explained in a lengthy thread that Quickville was in fact a large nation contained within the state of Virginia of their sister dimension that was named with a designated number which she did not know yet. She further wrote that in that dimension lived not only the counterparts of almost everyone in the real world, but also the vast majority of fictional animated characters, such as those from the animated series The Simpsons, Family Guy, Kim Possible, The Smurfs, and all the cartoon players belonging to Warner Brothers and Disney. A few replies further. She revealed that after allegedly consulting with her supposed husband Magician. She had two possibilities for the name of that dimension: 1672 or C197. Later that day, one of the people who had bought Christine's signed Love Quest poster from eBay left her a negative rating and opened a dispute after their purchase arrived late and damaged, causing Chris's eBay account positive rating to drop to 88.9 percent. In response. She listed a selection of blankets on eBay set at $100 each, which were advertised by Barbara in a YouTube video. Go. My name is Barbara Chandler. Here today we have four blankets, or one of them is the bed spread. Anyway, we would like for you to contact us through eBay and make a purchase. Of one of these blankets, or all four of them, or all all of them, if you would like.、Uh, we need the we need the help、uh, to fund our、uh, groceries、uh, for the rest of the month, and your help would be in purchasing one of these, the bed spread or the blankets.、Mm-hmm. Thank you for considering us. We appreciate it. You have a good day. This plush Snorlax is also available on a separate listing. Each blanket will be a hundred dollars a piece plus shipping. They will be shipped out within a, within a few days after purchase. Thank you very much. Over the course of the next day, the signed Snorlax plushie and one of the blankets were successfully sold. At around the same time. Christine's trespassing case was formally transferred from the Albemarle Court to Charlottesville's Court, indicating that it was still ongoing, with the next court date set on August 28th. When that day came, Chris's court case ended up being continued once more, with the next appearance set to September 11th. Later that day. Chris messaged Kiwi Farms user the captain out of concern because her real-life friend Anna McLaren had not messaged her back for 20 days. The captain reasoned that Anna only contacted her when it was convenient and was most likely ignoring her. The captain soon revealed that his communications with Chris 
which used to be daily, had reduced in frequency because the captain told her that the alternate dimension ideology was nonsense and refused to indulge in it. Later again, she purchased the video game Mirror's Edge Catalyst for $20. The next day, Chris listed a new item for sale on eBay, signed cans of orange-flavored Fanta, referencing the 2009 leaked video in which Christian drinks a solution of orange Fanta and his own semen. The following day, Chris posted a video plea for more monetary contributions recited by her mother. My name is Barbara Chandler. I'm asking you to uh, help us with the uh, car payment uh, by buying the blankets. Uh, they're nice, they're in perfect shape. Uh, they'll make a good addition to your home. Thank you for helping us. I appreciate it. All men. Chris also shared the video on Twitter, writing that they needed money because her mother was giving her financial grief. On August 30th, Christine drew a new counterpart of hers, which purportedly resided in Metropolis, Delaware, and was made in the style of a Marvel superhero known under her superhero name, the Quick Cyclite, who served as the chronicler of the real world Christine and had written over 100 novels about her life. On the final day of August, she returned to Twitter to post about the newly listed Mirror Ball for sale on eBay priced at $75, which she urged someone to buy to help her mother's bleeding gum problem. In addition, she posted an unused lighter that had been presented to her late father. Also on this day, Jacob Sockness, an individual who first learned about Christine from a YouTube video concerning bullying and fell in love with her, shared a photo of himself with the poster he had purchased from her. Since finding out more about Chris, Sockness felt that they shared a strong connection, considering that he was also regularly conversing with entities from other worlds through channeling sessions. In early September, Christine joined a private group on the social messaging platform Discord after being invited by one of her Twitter supporters and posted some photos of herself in the chat to prove her identity. There she discussed her upbringing and alternate dimensions. On September 2nd, she unveiled a drawing of a new character, Zapnote, a music-themed pony. However, upon searching her Twitter history, members of the QB farms discovered that she copied a My Little Pony character created by an artist who as a challenge would design a pony based on a set of given emojis. In Chris's case, she prompted the artist with a lightning bolt, blue heart, and musical notes. Also on that day, Christine announced that Quickville, along with most fictional characters, resided in the dimension C-197, which should not be confused with a similarly named dimension C-137, seen in the animated series Rick and Morty. This meant that the real-life Earth was located in dimension 1218, inspired by the multiverse Earth designation number first told to her by writer Seanan McGuire. The next day, Chris confirmed to a Twitter user that she still believed in Santa Claus and that one should keep an open heart and mind because anything was possible. On September 7th, she listed on eBay a collection of 22 carat golden replica stamps owned by her late father, Bob Chandler, for $500. On September 11th, Christine's trespassing case had its next scheduled hearing, which was promptly given another continuance with the next hearing to be held on September 25th. The next day, Jacob Sockness tweeted that he sexually desired Chris and yearned for her to hold him naked, likely written while under the influence of alcohol, as he later admitted to becoming extremely flirtatious if he was drunk and not busying himself with communicating with aliens and other entities. Later that day, Chris complained via a Twitter thread about her mother in a reply to a Twitter user expressing their struggles with caring for a family member with mobility issues. My mother was one on mobility issues years ago, then the house fire of 14 happened, and who boy, the heavy lifting and legwork I did. Mom did her share of work in helping clear the house out too, after moving back in at the end of the year 
Mom reverted to her immobile sense for a few years. Long waiting to empty out all of those boxes and sorting them out. Good grief! The most popular contents of all those boxes and bags? Various fabrics and cloth items. Ooh! Muchas ropas. 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 All of them belonging to my mother. I finally get myself motivated enough to go through a bunch of boxes a few months ago. And then she broke out her immobile funk and rut, especially after being ordered by our physician to drink meal replacement shakes. She followed in her own accord and will and began going through boxes and donating slash trashing the respective items as she saw appropriate. She cleared out all of the boxes from her current bedroom, which was the upstairs living room. She and the dogs have more space in that room now. I'm proud of my mother for working as hard as she has been feeling well to do. Yet she is also being very annoying. Christine, let's put this random good item on eBay. I really need the money for not only my bill payments, but also we need more food here. I am greedy too. Oh, you sold something of yours? I want $50 from that. She is constantly pestering and bugging me. Nowadays, nearly every time she comes downstairs to talk or chill, my impulsive, subconscious feeling of her presence is cringe and oh no, she's gonna bug me again of the damn finances again. As much as I can take deep breaths and collect myself, these feelings from my past emotions and continuing situations still linger in my mind. Sigh. But I digress. Point is, my mother was immobile for a time, and I worked with her to get her moving again. I also have my father, in his senior years, to thank for teaching me to be able to be patient as best as I am able to with others. On September 13th, Christine once again complained about her mother pestering her about money in preparation for a forecasted hurricane approaching their way and needing food and water. She asked for donations to be sent to her PayPal account. Three days later, she customized two Funko Pop figurines to give them the appearance of both her past male self and present female self. On September 18th, in response to the news of pop star Justin Bieber's secret marriage, Chris informed her readers that it was proof that anything was possible and claimed that soon everyone would be able to see fictional characters from Dimension C-197 existing in the real-world Dimension of 1218. The next day, in response to a Twitter user asking why Sonic the Hedgehog never performed oral sex on his partners, Christine wrote that in the sister Dimension where he lived, Sonic's lover was the character Knuckles, meaning that Sonic likely performed oral sex on Knuckles. On September 23rd, Chris posted photos and descriptions of the various stones and crystals in her possession, a mixture of ones from over 20 years before and ones she recently acquired at a mineral show. The next day, she was sued by a debt collector agency for unpaid debt, with a court hearing set for November 14th. On September 25th, her trespassing case was given yet another continuance this time with the next court date set on October 9th. Later that same day, Chris went to Twitter to write that she was slowly beginning to draw again and asked for her followers to have faith in her creating more comic books while she continued to deal with her other obligations and ailments, offering them a new drawing depicting Sonichu and Rosechu embracing. On the final day of September, Chris expressed her annoyance through a Twitter thread at the news that Lightning Bliss, a My Little Pony related creator, had blocked her. Chris blamed her old trolls and them spreading around her bad reputation. The Lightning Bliss later confessed that it was Chris's own actions and reputation which convinced her to enact the blocking. Also on that day, Christine drew herself in her hedgehog CPU form reminding everyone that she was still an alleged CPU in training and development, and that she had powers, allies, friends and family, and was humble and kind for everyone. She then changed her Twitter profile picture to that image. On October 2nd, Chris tweeted at YouTuber PewDiePie, asking him to direct message her to discuss a yet unknown idea. The next day, 
She revealed that she had heard of US President Donald Trump's supposed words of praise for authoritarian ruler of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, and wanted PewDiePie to bring attention to a protest regarding the matter in Hawaii, referencing a document written by one Jasmine Sky Nodder, who would regularly try to bring attention to topics that concerned her by asking for PewDiePie's help. Chris later tweeted that she wanted to attend the protest in person, and so encouraged monetary donations to be sent to her PayPal account. Upon reading this tweet, QB Farms user The Captain messaged her, asking if she was truly planning to travel to Hawaii. Christine informed him that it was not allegedly her to have written that tweet, but apparently her supposed husband, Majichan Sonichu, in an effort to increase donations. After writing further messages regarding the original idea guys, an interdimensional hole connecting her shower to the showers of Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary and a new so-called dark idea guy, the captain came to the conclusion that someone else gained access to her Twitter account and was manipulating her in the same manner that Joshua Wise and Stephen Boyd had done. On October 7th, Christine posted a YouTube video in which she also brings awareness to the anti-Trump protest occurring in Hawaii. Hey everybody, coming to you live from home once again. And I got to express my feelings. We've got to let Trump know that we do not like Kim Jong-un and we definitely don't like tyranny or any of that crap. So, take, so let's help out by supporting the, uh, support the group that's meeting in Hawaii in about a week or so information in the link in the link below so mm. down with tyranny down with tyranny thank you on october 8th christine bought a so-called charged quartz crystal pendant on ebay for twenty dollars two days later her trespassing case was given yet another continuance, with the next court date set on October 23rd. Also on that day, Chris shared a post regarding My Little Pony, confidently claiming that the Generation 4 cartoon series would continue until a 14th season. In the replies, people pointed out that Season 9 was in fact planned to be the final season of the show. Chris denied this highlighting that apparently the character Princess Celestia had told the staff of the show to continue making it for five more seasons. When asked about the validity of this claim, she revealed that the conversation apparently happened in the My Little Pony world of Equestria. Later again, Christine wrote a tweet directed at people who would tell her to get a job. She claimed that a mind as great as hers did not need a job and that since time was limited, getting a job was seen as silly. After another Twitter user asked her if she still needed money, Chris in response wrote that she did for the moment. She asked for financial help from her followers since her funds would be drained after sending out all of her comic books to her supporters on Patreon. On October 12th, she shared two pieces of fan art detailing Magichan and the Pokemon Mewtwo writing that she loved her husbands very much. Upon commenters notifying her that in the Magichan picture, a Fanta logo could be seen, and that Mewtwo appeared to possess a large penis showing through his shorts, she deleted the tweet. This was soon replaced by a similar tweet, now showcasing fan art depicting all of her alleged spouses, with the Mewtwo illustration now replaced with a less lewd rendering. People noticed that her tweets were location tagged in Australia as if they were posted from there. The captain asked about the location discrepancy, but Chris apparently did not seem to care about it. On October 14th, from Chris's Twitter account came the message. Help! My love, Christine's mind, is not as healthy as it could be. Yes, it is I, the one and only Magichan Sonichu. Yesterday, I was in Australia visiting with the president. Now I am continuing that journey, but I digress. Christine's pets need food. Please donate. Signing the message with a string of purple heart, lightning bolt, and purple heart emojis, signifying that it was Magichan. This tweet appeared to be sent from Auckland, New Zealand, leading Kiwi Farms members to assume that her account was in the control of a troll. 
perhaps either residing in the region or faking their location by using a virtual private network or VPN. Soon after, Christine seemingly took back control over her account and wrote that her mind has been receiving psychic upgrades from the cosmos among other things, signing her tweet with a lightning bolt, blue heart, and lightning bolt emojis, functioning as Christine's signature. Later again, Magichan Sonichu apparently returned to write that Christine would be busy in preparing for a so-called coming of Quickfill and merging of dimensions, and urged all those who weren't yet saved to give themselves to the CPUs. He later added that Chris's former friend, Megan Schroeder, had a pivotal role to play in what was coming and asked for someone to contact her so she could awaken the CPU goddess within her. Magichan signed his tweets with his alleged initials MGS before writing a third tweet correcting himself, signing it correctly with MCS. Magichan then posted a photo of Christian and Megan, calling for her to wake up as there was truly a goddess inside her. Upon asking Christine about these latest tweets, the captain informed QB Farms readers that she was not concerned about them in the slightest. Two days later, Chris told him that things were going fine as she had just accompanied her mother Barbara to a doctor's checkup, who found her in good condition. On October 17th, Chris urgently tweeted that she needed money for food to survive considering that she was still partially human. Funds were also needed for her mother and their pets. Her tweet was seemingly interrupted by a message written by her spouses, Magichan and Mewtwo, who urged others to donate to her. Chris then wrote that if she received enough money, she was willing to go visit Megan Schroeder, along with her mother and her poly loves, so that they could convince Megan that she was truly a goddess. The captain then privately messaged Megan herself, informing her about the tweets. She relates to him that she possessed guns and would like Chris to know that fact. Chris then promptly alerted her followers that a quote-unquote trusted source had told her that Megan had guns and so would not be visiting her. Chris closed her tweet with a wish for Megan to have a heart. Chris privately texted the captain detailing the origins of Megan's CPU Red Heart's soul claiming it had come from an obscure Nintendo-produced game console that was only distributed in Germany. Jacob Sockness then messaged Megan as well over Facebook, warning her about Chris coming, and said that if she hated Chris, she should burn her down like a California wildfire. Megan wrote that she was not interested in being involved with her in any way, and wished for Christine to understand that so she could be left alone. Sockness further wrote that it was unfortunate that Megan had had such bad experiences with disabled people like Chris and himself, but not all were like Chris. He added that he was saving up money to meet with Christine and asked Megan if she knew whether or not Chris was ticklish, for he planned to tickle her if they were to ever meet. Megan promptly blocked Jacob. On October 18th, Christine received a plush doll of Sonichu, created by a Twitter follower, made largely in response to her losing $6,000 during the Idea Guy saga, as a means for Chris to then sell it herself and make a profit. Chris said that the ears and tail of the doll should have been stuffed like the rest of the body, but otherwise felt it was very cute. The maker of the plushie commented that they were mad. When Chris asked why, they wrote back that it was because Christine could not help but complain. For that, Chris apologized and added that she really liked the doll. She then wrote a tweet clarifying that if people were to make copies of her original creations, they should do so with great heart. She commented that even though the Sonichu plushie was cute, it could do with more work, and that anyone aiming to recreate her creations should put in maximum effort. Chris deleted the tweet after about 10 minutes. Brian Shickley, the author of the Chris Chan prequel comic, then interjected to say that Chris should apologize with quote-unquote maximum effort. One of her Twitter acquaintances, Ting Ting's, messaged her, saying that considering the maker of the doll had done it in their free time, and for free, giving them a backhanded compliment like Chris did may have felt like getting punched in the face. 
and asked her to reserve her complaints for those she would pay for commissions, and not someone spending their free time to make a free gift. Chris apologized, stating that she had a lot of everything there on her mind. By the next day, she wrote a couple of apologetic tweets, stating that it was not her place to criticize a free plushie, and that she had forgotten how many supportive and appreciative fans she had to be thankful for. She promised that it would not happen again. On October 19th, Christine told her readers that she had just discovered a new special Sonichu character known as Jeichu, whose counterpart in the real world happened to be the captain. The captain then logged into Chris's Twitter account to delete two tweets announcing the creation of the character. She then stated that no one in the house, even the pets, would be able to eat anything over the weekend unless she received more donations. A Twitter user notified her that they would be informing authorities and inquire if the Chandler's pets could be rehomed and taken care of by someone more capable. YouTuber Shu Wan Head also chimed in, suggesting that Christine could start to do live streaming to increase her funds since she could not live solely on people's empathy and so instead could cash in on her quote unquote meme status. By the next day, she received a new patron for her Patreon page, pledging $100 per month, and so notified curious Twitter users that she was doing better financially, but still could use more money. Around a day later, Chris purchased three PlayStation 4 games, including one from the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series, at a total cost of around $100. On the 23rd, Christine was sued for unpaid debt again by Midland Funding, with the hearing set for December 19th. On that same day, she posted a concerning tweet. When the worlds merge, I will have access to tons of savings in Quickville. It is a lot of money, indeed. 10 to 1 is my repayment rate. For anyone wondering what the merger will look like, consider this, but show everyone reaching the light turning into Sonichus and Rose Chews. Her message was accompanied by an image showing people caught in a lightning storm, up in the clouds, ascending toward a godly light. This tweet was very quickly deleted. She soon after sent out the same tweet again, only this time, the attached image had a more pleasing blue hue rather than the original orangey glow, in addition to the reference of people changing into Sonichus replaced with a comment to state that they would be able to visit the other dimension. Chris later clarified the meaning behind her posts. Also, on this one tweet here, I realized when Magichan tweeted it, the comparison on the ascension where those chosen would become Sonichus and Rosechus, that was a metaphor for y'all's understanding of the situation. Seriously, you all who make it through will remain human. On the bright side, those of you who do make it with your own OCs in C-197 and its Equestria and other areas other than Earth, y'all will be able to meet and hang out with them. Good times. And getting to meet your favorite superheroes, among which is cool. Suffice to say, after that, beware the villains and supervillains. Let us superpowered heroes deal with them. Thank you. On October 26th, Christine made a YouTube video to explain the so-called dimensional merge. Hello everybody, this is Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. And we're going to talk about the recent, more obvious topic of the dimensional merge. Yes, this dimension right here, 1218, is going to be merged with our sister dimension. C197, where all of our, where most of our superheroes, supervillains, OCs, and what have you, and other characters existed, have been existing, and coexisting. Yep. Everybody who survives this will get to meet their, we get to meet their favorite superheroes, among others, among others, and everything. <sighs> but yes, there are. Those are going to survive, and those are not going to survive. But fortunately, should be most of the Earth population. But aside from that, the decision is definitely supported by me, but uh, also going to be made in part by your goddess of this Earth. Yep. 
parent of Jesus is a woman. Okay? Yep. Let's get that mind blower out of the way. I am Mrs. Christine Weston Chandler Sanchu, CPU, Blue Heart of Quickville, and Comma, and the consoles of Commodore. Still getting used to that, and I'm still adjusting and learning the ropes of all my responsibilities, powers, and everything. Still in development. But anyway, in the coming days up to the dimensional merge, you're definitely going to see some visual differences in your locals, in your local surroundings. So just be mindful and watchful of your surroundings. And... Ooh, yeah. What's this? What's this? Uh, you can tell, obviously, this is really coming from my heart. I have no script. This is me explaining it as best as I can just to this earth in this dimension, 1218. Anyway, don't panic. Remain calm. We will get through this. We will survive. And also, I definitely need to like a personal address to her of this world, Megan Schroeder. And if anybody tries, if anybody contacts her, just don't. Do not contact Megan Schroeder of this world at all. Okay? I'm essentially speaking to her directly through this video so then she can give an understanding from the recent events and what we've been letting her know about recently. Megan Schroeder is, still has been so many years since we've talked with each other. I want you to know first off that I definitely have no ill feelings against you and I s strongly support your relationship with your sweetheart. And obviously I'm not going to come after you whatsoever. I have been married since last March to my Magic Chance Sign Chew and Grizel Rose Chew. And more recently became married to Savannah Rose Chew and Mewtwo. But anyway, Megan, your counterpart in C197, leader of the nation of leader of the island nation of Krasna. Because after I had talked with your counterpart we still had in possession the original transformation pen that she had. I wanted to make sure I got in the right hand, so... You got it, Megan. It was delivered to, me, delivered to you. You have it. And you also got to share at least half of it of Red Heart's powers and memories. So, yes, Megan Schroeder, you are indeed a goddess. Just like I became a goddess. Because we were bestowed memories and everything. So, the sooner you wake up to that realization, the better it will be. So, with that, I will be ending this video shortly. But know that everyone, be aware of your surroundings. The changes are going to happen as the two dimensions merge. Remain calm. Don't fire any weaponry. And if you end up seeing your favorite superheroes or your OCs, be glad. I mean, like those famed amongst the brony community, you see your OC characters and you definitely hear from them telepathically. Open mind, open heart. Listen up. That'll help you out in the longer run. Anyway, so I think that pretty much covers it for now. Thank you all for listening. For I am Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu, the CPU Blue Heart of the nations of Quickville and Kama and the consuls of Commodore. Thank you. Be safe and have a great day. Chris then told the captain to send the video to Megan.
She stated that she felt bad for Christine, but would not, under any circumstances, meet up with her. Also on that day, Christine went back to Twitter to post about the dimensional merge and address some negative comments written on the QE forums. The worlds are not merging quickly enough. I need my savings in Quickville. My mother and I need to eat, and yes, I enjoy playing new games. The Neptunia series expands my mind and greatly. Don't judge! It's like a Christian reads the Bible, or a Muslim the Quran. Sheesh! Not to mention, I am getting to know my fellow CPU peers more through the gameplay as well, and earning the trophies is a bonus. And, if you naysayers must know, I got 4 goddesses online pre-owned with great discounts, and the prototype 2-pack was on clearance. Also, getting to know better my own responsibilities and duties as a CPU for myself. It is so much more than just answering prayers of the nations I am goddess over, I tell you all. At around the same time, Christine took notice of a Twitter account purported to belong to an organization that sold so-called official Sonichu merchandise, which gave some of its proceeds to the autism advocacy charity Autism Speaks. Chris addressed the account, declaring them a thief, and that Autism Speaks did not deserve money that was destined for her. She demanded that the producers of the merchandise cease their sales unless she is guaranteed some of the profits. Sonichu official merchandise then tweeted a private message they received from Chris, who told them that it was actually Magichan who had written the previous tweet, and that she wanted them to email her so her associates could help negotiate an arrangement. Chris then exclaimed on Twitter that she was not high all the time and did not smoke pot while driving. She then added that she was not as irresponsible as everyone thought, and that that mislabeling made her want to scream. She asked for her observers to leave certain friends of hers alone, most likely referring to the group of transgender teenagers, including Lucas, Devil, and one or two others, dubbed by Kiwi Farms users, the Teen Troon Squad, with whom Christine regularly socialized and smoked marijuana. Some of the guard dogs on the Kiwi Farms, namely Marvin and the Captain, believed that the Teen Troon Squad were responsible for much of her recent strange behavior, and believed the concept of the dimensional merge was their creation. Some members of the friend group later clarified that they did not introduce to her the idea of the merge, but did encourage it. Finally, on October 26th, a QB Farms user privately texted Chris, asking about her lost cat, Sorbet. She confirmed that he never came back, and was determined to have died considering that Christine confirmed that Sorbet's soul had traveled to the dimension C-197 and merged with his counterpart there, thusly transforming into an anthropomorphic cat, apparently a common occurrence. Chris also wrote that she apparently met the anthropomorphic Sorbet herself. On October 29th, Christine wrote a long thread of tweets, trying once again to explain the dimensional merge punctuating each tweet with an animated gif from various sources. She later added that she thought around half of the Earth's population would survive the merge. Kristen notified the captain that she intended to cooperate with the Sonichu merchandise team to create a written guide to the dimensional merge, proofread and supplemented with professional illustrations. She would in turn receive 50% of the profits. As the Chandler household slipped further and further into debt, and the future looked more and more uncertain, Christine tried her hardest to escape the misery of her life by creating the hope for a new one. She hoped all her and others' creations would come alive and live side by side with her. She hoped that if she tried really hard to believe in the merge, it could indeed come true. She hoped that if people agreed with her, it could let her know that there truly could be a way out from the life she made.